This summer, my family and I checked a cruise to Europe off of our bucket list. And even though we did hours and hours of research about the countries we were visiting, we still ran into a few situations where we had to figure out things on the fly, and we even learned a few lessons the hard way. Hi everyone, I'm Jamie from Sharon at Sea Travel. In today's video, I'm gonna share 10 things that we learned are crucial to know before cruising or just traveling overseas to the UK and Europe. These are no particular order, but each one of these things I'm gonna mention played a role in the successes and in some cases the failures of our travels. And today only, I've got a special offer for you. Anyone that's subscribed to the channel and watches the video until the end will get a totally free 11th tip for just a low, low cost of shipping and handling. Let's start with money, or more specifically, foreign currency. The UK will use the pound, many European countries will use the euro, but others may use currency unique to that country. We did research and purchased foreign currency from our local bank to take with us. Luckily, not only did our bank sell us the currency, but they bought it back as well because we just did not need as much as we thought we would. Now, local currency came in handy for smaller purchases like souvenirs, street corner food vendors, tipping for excursions and things like that, but in many cases, we were able to use our credit card for things like transportation, restaurants, and shopping. So make sure to bring some local currency for the places you're traveling to, but don't feel like you have to carry a lot of local cash because you may not end up using it all. Next, and since I just said to minimize the local currency, let's cover using your credit cards when you're traveling. Now, this is extremely important. Make sure the credit cards you plan to use when traveling overseas do not charge foreign transaction fees. You may have a lot of credit cards that you use on a regular basis, but they may not be designed for travel. If you use your regular credit card for purchases outside of the US, your credit card company will charge you a fee of anywhere from one to 3% of the total of the transaction. Now that might not sound like a lot, but it can add up very quickly. Contact your bank to see if your credit card offers no foreign transaction fees, and if it doesn't, get a card, or better yet, get two cards, one for a backup, that will waive those fees. A few other things about credit cards, as usual, I will always recommend not using a debit card for two main reasons. One is that you're just exposing your own bank account, if you do, to any fraud or improper activity. And number two, you can use that credit card to rack up travel points and rewards that you can spend later and benefit from. Also remember, charges to your credit card will be made in the form of the local currency. So be aware of the local exchange rates. But when you see the bill at home, those amounts will usually show in US dollars or whatever the local currency is where you live. So don't be surprised when the dollar amounts look different when checking your credit card statement. We were surprised how often we were able to just use our credit card on our European cruise. At every port, whether it was for transportation, like train tickets and taxis, or restaurants and shopping, it was just like being anywhere we would go at home. Almost every place took credit cards and that really made things very convenient. Next up, don't overlook getting some sort of travel insurance for you and your family. Whether you're going on a European cruise or any cruise for that matter, or just taking a land-based vacation overseas, remember that your current medical insurance may not cover you while you're out of the country. Not only do you wanna make sure that you're covered medically, but you wanna be covered financially as well. When looking into travel insurance, make sure the policy you choose will cover the specific things you're concerned about. Medical emergencies, cruise ship evacuations, travel disruption reimbursement. Whew, say that 10 times fast. These are all things you may not think about until it's too late. So make sure to plan ahead. And if you need a recommendation, here are two reputable companies that my wife Sharon usually recommends to her clients, Travel Guard and Alliance. Now, I mentioned that we planned ahead and did a lot of research, but one thing that we didn't expect was how hard it was to book a hotel for our family. You will want to pre-book hotels as far in advance of your trip as you can if staying in the UK or Europe overnight. The closer you get to your travel date, the availability will become limited and prices will go up. Now, I know that's pretty common for any type of travel to any popular destination, but what we didn't expect was how hard it was to find a hotel room for more than three people. Now, I'm not kidding you when I tell you that it was extremely challenging finding any moderately priced hotel room in London. We were traveling with five family members and ended up opting for two connecting rooms at a Holiday Inn near our cruise port in Dover versus staying the night in a London hotel. We ended up getting two nights for two rooms at the same price as we would have paid for one room and one night in the city. Another thing that we did, which saved us a lot of headaches, was we planned our transportation from the airport to our hotel and from our hotel to the cruise port a number of weeks ahead of time. 
In our case, Heathrow Airport in London was an hour and 45 minutes from our hotel in Folkestone. Now, Folkestone is a little town outside of Dover where our cruise port was. And we made arrangements with a car company for the five of us because we heard it was next to impossible to get a taxi or even an Uber in most cases that would hold five people at once. Maybe we could have juggled some combination of buses and trains to get down there, but with all of our luggage, and of course, after an overnight flight from New York to London, that was not an adventure that we were ready to take. And even though it was only 20 minutes away, we ended up having to get two taxis from our hotel to the cruise port to hold all of us and our luggage. And we arranged the taxis about a month before we made the trip. We ended up using a company called Airport Pickups London to get from Heathrow to our hotel in Folkestone. And then we used JJ Taxis to get from our hotel to the cruise port. Without planning ahead for just these two trips, I'm not sure what we would have done or paid to get where we needed to go. Now, keeping with the topic of planning ahead with transportation, make sure to look at what's near the locations you're going to and how you will get around once you get there. For example, when taxis for five weren't readily available in the UK, we ended up taking the bus to go out sightseeing. Now, this was very challenging. We had not planned on this originally, but we eventually got to where we wanted to go. Luckily, we researched public transportation options for the cruise ports we were visiting, so we already had a pretty good plan in place for how to get around from point A to point B. But without that research, we would have wasted half our day just trying to figure out how to get from the cruise port to the train or bus station. Whether you're traveling by cruise ship or just on foot going city to city, knowing your public transportation options ahead of time will make your experience much less stressful and much more enjoyable. All right, now if you're paying attention, you're seeing a theme here of trying to be prepared for any situation you might run into. I wanna tell you a little bit about the two tools that we used over and over that helped us to be prepared as we could be, and those two things are Google Earth and Google Maps. If you've watched other videos of ours, you may have heard us mention these two things, but we can't express enough how helpful they have been to us on all of our travels. Now for a travel overseas, first we use Google Earth for so much of our pre-trip planning to research the locations of our hotels and cruise ports. Knowing where we will be and what is nearby can be invaluable. We will literally sit down on the computer, open up Google Earth and go into street view to walk around the streets and see what is nearby wherever we're gonna be, like dining options, stores for shopping and other places like that. Then once we get to where we're going, we use Google Maps to navigate the streets and find the destinations we are looking for. Now, in our case, we got lucky. Our son, Matthew, was very familiar with Google Maps, and he was like our personal tour guide using Google Maps to find bus and train stations, dining options, and any place else we wanted to go. And then he got us back to the cruise ship safely every time. All right, now you might be saying, Google Maps on your phone? Will my phone even work outside of my home country? Well, that'll bring us to the next topic. Before you travel, you want to get with your cell phone provider and see what travel programs they offer to use your cell phone out of country. In our situation, we have Verizon. In every cruise port we stopped in, we had the option of using a travel pass for the day, which is a 24 hour period that while in that country, we could connect our cell phones locally and basically use them just like we would at home. Now this did cost us about 10 bucks a day per device, but for us, it was well worth it and it allowed us to go out and explore on our own without purchasing any excursions in a number of ports. And that way we could do and see whatever we wanted when we were in port on those days. Of course, doing this also allows you to stay connected back home, and you can certainly post lots of pictures on social media to make your friends and family very jealous of your travels. Again, no matter what method of traveling you're doing, connecting locally on your cell phone can make all the difference in the world when exploring places outside of your home country. All right, so next, what about the language barrier? Well, if you're just traveling from the US to the UK, you're in luck. All you have to do is worry about the different accents because you'll all be speaking English. Now, when you finally arrive in another European country, it can be quite a culture shock to realize everyone's speaking the same language except you. But there are two things that will put you at ease. First, download an app like Google Translate to your phone. So if you need to communicate in a foreign language, you'll be able to translate back and forth if you have to. But I have better news for you, especially if you're traveling from the US to Europe. In almost every area you'll visit on a cruise, and many places if traveling by land, English is a very common second language. It's taught to children at a young age in schools and you'll encounter many situations where someone will be bilingual and will speak English as well as the local language. Almost every place we went to in Europe, which included Denmark, Germany, Estonia, Sweden, and Finland, we found many people that made communicating very easy, whether it was at a train station, on buses, tourist attractions, shops, and even restaurants. We felt very lucky and appreciative to interact with so many great people on our travels 
that were happy to help us and communicate with us in English. Now we're almost at the end of the tips, but we need to talk about the different climates and environments that you'll encounter in your travels. Dressing comfortably and being prepared for local weather is very important to having a great travel experience. Always be ready with an extra layer of clothing in case it's colder than you expected. We experienced some very chilly mornings on our travels that turned into very warm, beautiful afternoons. So we ended up removing layers often. Also, be ready for rain. Our first two port days on our cruise called for possible rain and ended up being gorgeous afternoons. So when we left our rain gear on the ship, expecting another beautiful day, we had to scurry to buy an umbrella and ponchos. Also, remember that many of these places were built thousands of years ago, so you'll find some very uneven roadways and cobblestone streets, so make sure you're wearing comfortable shoes for walking, and yes, you will do plenty of walking to experience what these amazing cities have to offer. Make sure to research the local weather and then be ready for anything so nothing puts a damper on your travels. Well, there you have it. That's 10 things to make sure you remember to do when traveling overseas, whether for a cruise or any other method of travel. Oh wait, did I promise everyone who was subscribed and stayed till the end that there'd be an extra tip involved? Well, listen, I'll trust that you have done your part and subscribed and maybe hopefully gave the video a thumbs up and we'll share it with family and friends. So here you go, one last tip, and I think it's a good one. Let's talk about tipping, or as some people refer to it, leaving a gratuity. If you're traveling from the US, you'll find that in other countries, tipping is not nearly looked at in the same way that it is here at home. So make sure to look into the tipping practices of the area you're visiting. In many places, tipping is not expected, but in most cases, it'll still be appreciated, but you don't really need to follow the whole 15, 18, 20% rules of tipping like we do here in the States. If you do tip, remember the local exchange rates so you don't totally over tip or accidentally under tip. Now I'll just leave you with one quick funny story about tipping. We were in Germany and we had just finished a fantastic lunch at a local restaurant when we realized we were running late and needed to catch the next bus to the train station or we might risk missing our train back to the cruise port. When we went to pay in the local currency, which was a euro, we weren't using our credit card for this, we only had large bills and the server did not have enough to make change for us. We literally had no time, so we ended up tipping her about the same amount that our meal cost. And she was shocked as we just gave her the money and ran out the door, each of us thanking each other back and forth. Now we laughed about it later, since we probably wouldn't have spent the euros anywhere else anyway. And since it was a bucket list, we really didn't care about spending the extra money. Plus, she was so happy, it made us feel great. Now I hope that if you're traveling overseas, you find a few of these tips to be helpful. And if you have any great tips yourself, please feel free to leave them in the comments below the video to help your fellow travelers. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.